Hi friends, welcome back to Calm in the Chaos Homeschool. If you're new here, my name is Davine and I am homeschooling four kids who are in 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth grade this year. Today's video is going to be an update on how our homeschool year is going so far. We have been homeschooling about five to six weeks so far, and so I'm going to kind of give you a general overview of how that's going, as well as I'm going to be sharing with you my family subjects for this school year, so sort of our family subject picks, and I can update you on how they're going so far since we have been doing it for a while now. So if you're interested in all that, stick around. I will put timestamps in the description box below in case you're interested in a particular section of this video, so do check that out if you want to jump around a bit. So today's video is a collaboration hosted by myself and Shauna from Homegrown Homeschool. That means a bunch of other moms are also doing similar type videos. The theme is how the homeschool year is going. So I will link in the description box below a link to a playlist with all the videos attached so you can see how a bunch of mom's homeschool years are going so far. So check that out after you're done watching this video. Okay, so I'm gonna get started with just a general update. So like I said, we are in week five or six of the school year. And this year, I felt like we had to start a lot more suddenly. I generally like to start our school year in the middle of August, but it was the end of August before we could get started. And I really felt like we needed sort of to start a little in more of a run versus our slow start that we generally do. I still did do a slow start. So I did do a slow start, but it was more over a week of slowly starting instead of like two or three weeks like we normally do. And this year is different because my oldest is only part-time homeschooling this year. She is going to a sort of alternative education environment Mondays and Wednesdays, and she is doing four out of six. Like she's, it's high school, so she's doing four out of six of her credits there this year. And so... Yeah, so that is different for us. Um, so she goes on Mondays and Wednesdays. It's pretty far. So I pack up my sixth and seventh grader and we go and we drop her off. And then we've been homeschooling at a library on those days. And honestly, I am preferring that than when we're at home with my two boys. So they're two boys. And we did have to be home one of those days. And I was sort of, because she, my oldest was sick, so we didn't take her to school. And we were home one of these days and it just didn't go as smoothly as our Monday, Wednesday routine. Jumping in the car by eight o'clock and driving to this town to drop her off for school. And then, yeah, so let me tell you how that's going. So we have to leave about 7.55 in the morning on those Mondays and Wednesdays. And we get in the car and we've been listening to A Child's History of the World because my kids are all doing history sort of separately this year. So my oldest is doing history at her, let's say, charter school. Uh, so she's doing history there. So she's doing American history. And then my sixth and seventh graders and my eighth grader are all doing ancient and medieval history. But my eighth grader is doing it all on her own. And then my sixth and seventh grader are doing it with me. So. We are listening to A Child's History of the World for about 10 to 15 minutes on our drive there. And then we are doing our audiobook. We have been doing A Golden Goblet. And so that has actually been a really fun story. We have enjoyed that. It was a little slow start and I wasn't sure if my kids would get into it, but I think we're all enjoying it now. So we listened to that for the rest of the drive. You drop my daughter off. We drive down the street to the library. We wait a few minutes because they don't open till nine. My boys get a lot done in the car. I just say, okay, well, you should get this many things done before we get into the library. We get in the library. I have a conference room generally booked. I do book it ahead. And if I can't get the conference room for the whole time, I'll get it as much as I can. And if not, we just do it at the library. And it's actually a very beautiful, nice library with a lot of tables and chairs and different spots. So it is a little more distracting when we're not in the conference room. But even so, we can still get work done but they're just like super focused on those days. The conference room is amazing. It has basically a six seater table. It has a very large TV with attachments so I can attach it to my computer. 
So we watch like World Watch News. We still can watch like videos that go along with our curriculum. I can play music off of my computer. I have like this rolling bin thing that I have all my ling all my like literature based stuff that I'm using with my boys. So we're doing Actions and Reactions by Guest Hollow. We are doing their history. So I'll read from the history from the Kingfisher Encyclopedia. We're doing a Bible a Bible study together, me and the boys. They have Beowulf Grammar from Guest Hollow. And then they have their independent work in their binders. So yeah, so that's been going really well. We just kind of alternate through the things and we break it up with little breaks and they go wander around the library. And we can just get a lot of really focused work done by 12, 12.30 and we eat lunch. And then we just have like a little bit of time to kill before we go pick my daughter up at one. So she's off at one and then we drive and pick her up and then we drive home and we finish listening to our audiobook on the way home. And then when we get home, the boys might have a little bit of stuff left. Maybe they're silent reading, maybe some typing, something like that. But we are getting so much done on those Mondays and Wednesdays. It's been really nice. The routine is actually really nice. I was worried about leaving the house by eight, but we just make sure we pack our lunches the night before or the lunch before when they're eating lunch, they go ahead and pack their next day's lunch. So that's been going really well. And then Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we are at home and we're starting at 8.30, which is a little earlier than we used to start. Nine was really nice, but because we leave the house at eight, those other two days, I just thought we'll just do 8.30 and keep it sort of consistent. So we start around 8.30. Generally, we'll start with independent work because I have a few kids and one in particular that really just takes an hour to sort of get ready to start school. So one of my children, he can get most of his independent work done in that first hour. My other one will be in his room doing who knows what for the first 45 minutes and then he might be able to get something done for the last 15 minutes before we start group stuff. So that has been consistent. Yeah, he's a little hard to get started in the morning and we have had some problems some days, having a good attitude, not trying to basically explode the morning. So that is normal. That's what we've been going through here. And then my oldest daughter, she's here, she's doing work, she's on the computer. She gets assigned homework on the days she's not at school. So she's working on that or she's working on things that I assign to her. So I still assign things to her. She's still doing courses with me. And I will be making a video on what she's doing in ninth grade for me that I'm assigning her. And I'll maybe briefly talk about the things she's doing at the charter school, but that will be probably the next video. So if you wanna see all that, stick around. And if you wanna see more specifically what my boys are doing, sixth and seventh grade, and then my eighth grade daughter, those videos came out before this video. So you can go check those out. And then my eighth grader, she just works on her own. She gets lots done when she's home by herself on Mondays and Wednesdays. So she is enjoying a little bit of quiet time and she's really mostly doing ninth grade work and she gets a lot done. But when we're home, that first hour is also open to meetings with my girls if they need help. So like my eighth grader, if there's something she doesn't know or she needs help with something, she will come and talk to me during that time and we can get through some of her work. And then we do our group time, which involves morning basket, read aloud. I'm looking over here. So we do World Watch News, Bible, morning basket, read aloud, group subjects, and Spanish. And so I'm going to show you all of the curriculum that we're using for our group subjects. I'm not gonna show you our morning basket things. I'll have a morning basket video coming out probably in about six-ish weeks. I like to do that at the end of each term. If you wanna see what I put in my morning basket originally or my consideration for what to put in my morning basket, I do have a plan my morning basket with me video that I put out this summer. So I'll link that in the description box below. So if you wanna see the morning basket stuff but I'll be going through all our family group work stuff in a bit. But basically this year I had to decide what am I going to do with all four of my kids on these Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays, and then what am I going to have them split up on? So in the end, what we ended up splitting up on is history because my oldest is doing history at her charter school, so we kind of split, so I do that with the boys, and then my girls do those on their own. And then we are also doing science pretty much independently. So 
eighth grader, ninth grader, and then my sixth and seventh boys. We are doing science on two days of the week. Yeah, so I was worried about my Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays mornings. I was worried about losing some of that time to speech therapy, occupational therapy. My three younger kids are in a charter school that we have to do an elective once a week too. I didn't know what my schedule was going to be for that. And so I was really hoping to be able to guard those three days that we have together. And we have been able to have the full morning on all three of those days. So mostly there's one day we have to leave a little earlier. So I do have to condense a bit, but I'm really happy that we still have three full mornings pretty much together to do the group stuff because I don't know, that's my favorite part. I think my favorite part of homeschooling. So that has been going pretty well. The OT speech and then even our like, charter school classes came later in the afternoons. We are still meeting with a church group for kind of a homeschool group on Friday afternoons when the weather's nice. It's a little smaller this year because we did lose one of our families to uh, going back to teaching and her kids going to the school that she teaches at. So that's sad for us, but we still have two other families that we meet up with pretty regularly. This is our fifth year. Going into our fifth year of homeschooling, and that first week was just so smooth. We do stop the routine of homeschooling in the summer, though I do have my kids do some work during the summer. So they still do language arts, math, reading, those things in the summer, kind of on and off throughout the summer because they are kids that will lose, well, most of them are kids that will forget everything if we don't do stuff in the summer. But we're not like structured and we're not doing group time and all that. But like, it's just so nice in this fifth year that we just kind of like, they know the routine, they know what to expect. And we just kind of roll into it and it's just a lot less drama. <laughs> than it, I, would, I would say like even our third year was good. So third, fourth, fifth year. I remember our first year was very challenging just trying to figure out what worked for us and what kind of schedule to have. And it's just nice, it's nice to have that. And I know that, yeah, last year we had a really long, I call it the honeymoon period at least six weeks. I would say six to eight weeks. We usually get a six to eight week honeymoon period where things are generally pretty smooth. Uh, you might have one kid that you struggle with, but you always struggle with that kid and everyone else is just kind of going along nicely. And then, then there's usually a point that people start to fall apart. So we haven't hit that point yet. So that's nice. Hopefully it'll keep going for a bit, but yeah. So homeschooling has been going pretty good and I've been very happy with the work that we've been able to get through as far as group subjects and stuff. Obviously, my expectations have to change sometimes. I did have to adjust my boys' schedule down pretty much immediately because I just kind of, you know, you, there's always more that you want to do, but it's not realistic. And when you start getting a certain amount of pushback, I've learned to adjust it a lot quicker. Not to say that I won't do anything that there's pushback for, but I can tell when it's like really it's just too much versus I just don't want to do it or it's just kind of hard and I don't want to do it. I can tell that a lot easier now in our fifth year. So I did adjust some of the workload for my boys a bit. And then like you just have to be realistic when I'm only doing stuff with my boys twice a week that's how often we're doing it. So if we're not gonna finish the curriculum and that's just how that is. And then the same thing for our group subjects. If we're only doing something three times a week or less because we rotate through group subjects, then I have to be realistic on how much we can actually accomplish. So yeah, in general, instead of like picking two things that we're really like working on and focusing on for shorter periods of time, we generally pick more things that we kind of focus on for longer periods of time as far as over a span of a longer period of time, but in shorter segments. And that just seems to work better for our family. And we just like variety, structure and variety, variety within our structure. So I'm gonna move into showing you our group subjects, family subjects, the things that we all do together on the three days of the week when we have together. Yeah, so let me get into that part here. I'm gonna start with the one that we do the most. I'm kind of gonna go that way. Like what do we do the most and then slowly work to the things that we kind of rotate in a little less. And so one that I'm trying to do every single day 
if at all possible. And this is with three of my kids. My eighth grader is learning Chinese, Mandarin Chinese, so she leaves for this part. But this is, <laughs> this is my daughter's um, rendition of Beginning Spanish for Families by Masterbook. She just decorated my cover for me. We started that beginning of last year. You get maybe 18 months. You get a year and a half of the videos. It is video based and we only got through half of the lessons last year. We were doing it twice a week, like once or twice a week. And we only got through half of the lessons and I want to get through as many of these lessons as we can since we paid for it. Last year we were alternating Mandarin Chinese and Spanish. And so I did Mandarin Chinese with all my kids. We, be, we, we did that for like three years because my daughter's adopted from Taiwan. I grew up in Taiwan. So knowing some Mandarin was important to me. But in order to finish this Spanish course that I paid for, we are doing this three times a week whenever possible. Sometimes it's two times a week, but it is really our priority. One that I try to get to every day that I can. So we have enjoyed this program a lot. I do recommend it. Masterbooks Academy, Beginning Spanish for Families. I would say its intended age range is probably like second or third grade up to sixth, seventh grade, but I have all middle schoolers plus a high schooler doing it and it works for us. It's enjoyable for us. We like the teacher. She speaks a lot in Spanish. She does translate for herself, but she does a lot in Spanish. And so it's kind of, it's kind of fun to try to understand her. It's easy to follow along once you have been watching her for a while. Yeah, she does a really good job of teaching it. So some of my kids have learned more Spanish in the one year that we've been doing this versus the many years that we've been doing Mandarin. So that's, I don't know what that says, but, but <laughs> we've been enjoying that one. I do recommend that one. Another one that we do quite often is Guest Hollow's high school geography curriculum. This is our third year working on this. We really enjoy it. It's been a really fun curriculum. We started our first year using this. We started with the beginning of this and we went through like the map, more physical geography type things. And then last year we started more with the Eastern Hemisphere because we were pairing it with sunlights, sunlight level F, which is geography and cultures of the Eastern Hemisphere. And then I was pairing this with for my girls. So my, my girls have been doing the online textbook and workbook at the high school level. And then we do some of the things together as a group. And so then this year is our third year into this. We are finishing up the geography and cultures of the Eastern Hemisphere and continuing to do the some stuff as a group and some stuff my girls are doing on their own. So <laughs> if you've been around here, these are the books that are generally the ones that we read together the most. We have Smithsonian, People and Places. This is a really gorgeous book. I think this is intended for the middle. They do give you different options in Guest Hollow to adapt it for middle school and high school. This is the middle school version. It's great. We really enjoy it. We have Hungry Planet. So that goes around the world. It looks at a family. What do they eat in a week? And just sort of their lifestyle and stuff. And then we have Material World. And this also looks at families and all of the material possessions they have and just learn more about their culture and families. Then there's this one, Prisoners of Geography, Our World Explained in 12 Simple Maps. And this is also the middle school suggestion. There is a more advanced one for high schoolers, but this has been working really well for us. We like that. Where on Earth Atlas, probably also a middle school one, I'm guessing, but more of an infographic type of atlas. And this one, we have Smithsonian, A World of Wildlife or Wildlife of the World. This is beautiful. I picked this up sort of halfway through our year. And we're just reading through pages here about wildlife. We didn't start with this because I couldn't find the book they suggested. And then I found this on sale at Barnes & Noble. So I picked it up and started using that. But those are sort of our group spine books. And then Guest Hollow always has like additional literature books if you want to add it. So one is like Kampong Boy. We did not read this, but 
it kind of looks very interesting. It's based on someone's real experience growing up in a village in Vietnam. We definitely will be reading this, A Long Walk to Water, by Linda Sue Park. Now that I know her name, I find all the books that she's written. So she wrote like a single sh shard, and then she also wrote like books about Korea and stuff. So yeah, so I'm definitely going to read that one. And then we have like Peace Child, which I think you might want to be careful if you're reading this. It might have some more graphic details, but it, I think we're going to try that one. So an unforgettable story of primitive jungle treachery in the 20th century. And this is a true story from cannibals to Christ followers, a true story. So there is that. So sort of a missionary story, I guess. So we'll probably be reading those, well, those last two I showed you, A Long Walk to Water and Peace Child at some point this year. All right, next I have another curriculum that we are in our third year of. Now there's a reason for this. I was going to finish it last year, but our charter school said that we have to do health every year. And I learned about that sort of at the end of last year. And I didn't want to get a new health. I just like the health we're doing. So I sort of stopped what we were doing at the end of last year and saved it for this year. And I'm gonna just spread it out over the year. So this is our third year using Guest Hollow Junior Anatomy. We are still really enjoying it. We're going through all the body systems. It's a great comprehensive view of body systems and then just like health in general. Right now we're learning about nutrition and diet and the digestive system and all that. So that has been really fun. So some books that we have been using pretty much all year is 100 Things to Know About the Human Body. We just do like a two-page, sorry, holding books here, two-page spread every time we do health. I'm calling it health this year. We have the body book, which you cut and paste different body systems. So we use that as it comes up in the guest hollow schedule. Blood and Guts is another spine. So just a lot of information in there. And then... We really, really, really enjoy Guest Hollow's YouTube videos that are suggested. We were just watching some at lunch. We often watch Guest Hollow suggested videos at lunch, whether that be geography. I didn't mention geography has a lot of linked YouTube videos. We watch geography YouTube videos. We watch one for their science. We have a list for this, health. So we were watching some today. We really enjoy them. But here are some other books that they suggest and we will read as they come up or I'll look at them and I'll either put them in a basket for kids to read as they're interested or I'll read it to them. So it's disgusting and we ate it. This is one I will read because it's nice and short. So anything that's nice and short, I will read to my kids during group time. We have help, it's eating my flesh. So this looks like one I would just stick in my bin and my youngest son who is interested in facts and information will probably read it because it's kind of gross and he'll like that. Probably wouldn't read that as a read aloud, that'd be too much. Then the exciting endocrine system. So this is one I would probably be reading to my kids because it's not super long. So we have that. A Chew, the most interesting book you'll read about germs. And so this I would probably read because it's not too long here. And this level is, it's intended for all right, so it's intended for third to eighth grade. And I would say that's appropriate. Third to eighth grade sounds good. Pasture's Fight Against Microbes. Looking forward to this book. We will definitely read that. Outbreak, Plagues That Changed History. Probably not gonna be able to read that, but it'll be a fun book to put out for kids that are interested. Science Comics, Plagues, The Microscopic Battlefield. So a comic. So I'll see if I can read that. Yeah, I do like stuff like that. So you can see we're going into sort of germs and plagues and like hormones and things like that sort of towards the end of this guide. So you can see there's still plenty for us to do this year. We have belly busting worm invasions once again. Probably one I'll just stick out for the boys to look at. I probably won't read this one. We have invincible microbe tuberculosis. This is something I probably would have read if I had more days, like maybe five day a week, but I don't. So that looks interesting, but probably can't get through that this year. An American Plague, the true and terrifying story of the yellow fever epidemic in 1793. And that reminds me of the book 1793, like fever 1793. I think that's what it's called. That might be one that we could do like as an audiobook and listen to. So 
That's what that reminded me of. Probably more likely to do an audiobook than read that at this point. We have Bachelor Science Microbiology. It's a small world. So these are fun. I do like the Bachelor Science. We're using their Elements one, and it's pretty fun. So that's probably when I'll just stick out in the morning basket. And then we have Germ Zappers. And this is these are fun little books. I do like these. There's a whole series of these books. So I'll definitely read that one. And I will link a link to all the books and curriculums and things that I mentioned in this video in the description box below in case you want to take a look. So that is our health this year. And like I said, we're going into our third year using this and we have really enjoyed it. I would say, honestly, I really like Guest Hollow's Geography. That's one of my favorites. And then close second would be Guest Hollow's Junior Anatomy. And so like, even though we're spreading it out over three years unintentionally, it doesn't mean we don't enjoy it. It actually means that we enjoy it so much that even though we are going through it slowly, we don't drop it because it's just, yeah, we enjoy it. So, okay, so next I have two things that I'm not doing super often. Actually, I'm gonna say health, I try to do about once a week. And then say geography, I'd probably do two out of three days a week. And then these two, I try to do about once a week. Every two weeks is fine as well. So the first thing here is, this is High Gaspy. So High Gaspy stands for Have I Got a Story for You. We are working on the Renaissance period. And these are mostly, there's videos. So there's 12 lessons. It's mostly an art history course. So there are videos. There's a teacher, Beth, and a little drop of paint called Gaspy. So you say, hi, Gaspy. And she goes through the history, the time, the world that the artist was in and explains sort of the backgrounds. And then she also, we look at paintings and she points out different features in the painting to notice. So I think each year they talk specifically about three artists of that period. So we are studying Da Vinci, Michelangelo and Raphael. And so right now we're on Da Vinci I do like how she actually talks about the time period and sort of their life and their history, sort of like how that artist came to be and the environment that they were in. And yeah, we're just learning like art history. I do like that. And then I'm not going to actually say too much because I think I'm going to do a dedicated video to High Gatsby at some point. So we are enjoying it. This workbook also comes with it. And I will show you what's in it when I do my dedicated video and talk more about different components of High Gatsby. But suffice it to say, it's been going well so far. We've done two lessons so far in this. This next one is one that we are continuing on from last year. I didn't start it till halfway through the school year, so we're actually doing okay as far as not dragging out too long. I got this because it goes along well with studying geography and countries of the world. We have been doing Living Harmonies. This is by Thistles and Biscuits. And basically we are learning about, about nine to 10 different musical styles from around the world. Each time we probably have three or four lessons for each style. So I think there's about 36 lessons. So you can do it like once a week. And you could break those lessons up into two days easily if you wanted to. But we are currently learning about Gamelan from Indonesia and we were studying Southeast Asia. So I'm not necessarily doing this in order. I do if I don't have a specific area that we're going to be studying for that music, but I am trying to jump around and choose the music of sort of the area that we're studying at the time. So that has been working out really well. So it's almost like an extension of our geography. So this has been fun. Some of the videos can be a bit long, the music videos. And so I just kind of will listen to some of it or we'll skip around a little bit. And the lessons can get a little bit long. So that's why I said you could easily break it up. Like each lesson could probably be two lessons, but we really can only do 20 to 30 minutes of a lesson. So that's sort of us. So that has been fun. Like I said, we are doing this about once a week or maybe once every two weeks. Okay, so I have two more things to show you. One thing that we are actually doing very frequently, as, fre as frequently as geography, I would say maybe twice a week whenever possible, 
is our election 2024 unit study. And you can probably guess why we are kind of rushing on this a bit. This is only a three week unit study. So it's not super long, but we have had to split up the lessons a bit. So I'm just trying to get through this as quickly as possible. This is written by Emily Cook of Build Your Library. Yeah, so we are roughly on week two. And essentially she schedules out three books for you to read and learn about kind of election process in the United States. So we have, what's the big deal about elections? And that's just a little book like this. We have, see how they run campaign dreams, election schemes, and the race to the White House. This one has a lot of humor in it. It does explain some more complicated concepts in a simpler way. So I've actually learned a lot because I don't know a lot about the American government system. And then there's this one, Madam President, The Extraordinary True and Evolving Story of Women in Politics. So this just kind of goes through and talks about different women throughout history and their contributions to politics and stuff like that. So if you've never used Build Your Library, I would say she probably leans a little bit to the left. So I would say there's a little slant to the left in some of these books. I don't mind. We can talk about both sides as much as possible. And so I don't, I really like this unit because it is short and to the point. I just wanted something short and sweet and something that could get my kids interested in what's happening. And this has done the trick. So we've had a lot of really good conversations. So I'm learning more and so are my kids. So this has been a good unit. So this is going to be something that we're going to be finishing pretty soon. And I do have something that I'm going to replace either that or if we ever finish our geography early, I'm not sure. At some point, I plan on putting this in the rotation. So this is Evolution, the Grand Experiment by Dr. Carl Werner. And so basically it's talking about evolution and what has been found and what things that prove or disprove evolution or I saw an interview that Leilani from Living with Eve did with this Dr. Carl Werner and it was really interesting. And I had this book. This is from a sunlight science level and we never got to it. And I wanted to do it actually with all of my kids because I want them to sort of have an understanding of the theory of evolution and sort of different viewpoints on that. So I was sort of saving this to do as a group. So I'm hoping to get to this this year when some of these other things start slowing down a bit, I'm going to be adding this to the rotation. So I can't tell you how this is going at this point, but that is part of the plan. So let me know if you have any questions about any of these things below. Like I said, it's a lot. We're doing group work three times a week and we just sort of rotate through these. We generally do two of these each day for about 20 to 30 minutes. And yeah, that's what works for us. Yeah, so things are going well for us so far this school year. I would love to hear from you. How is your school year going? How long have you been homeschooling at this point of the year? Are you still in your honeymoon period or did you never hit that honeymoon period because you're you know, just struggling to find your routine? Let me know how things are going. And thank you so much for coming today. Don't forget to check the playlist below to see how everyone else's homeschool year is going. Thanks for coming. And I hope to see you all in a future video. Bye everyone.